Hi everyone, welcome to our program today about the fine art of making mistakes. We're going to learn about mistakes and how they turn into wonderful products and inventions. So anyway, the best place to start is a supermarket. A supermarket is like a museum, except that it's free and you get to eat the exhibits. What are we waiting for? It's cold outside, let's go in. There are thousands of products here. Each one has a story, perhaps thousands of stories. You could do a PhD on every product, or maybe a thousand. Let's go take a look at some. We're even gonna buy some for later. So first of all, some tea. Tea, uh, where are we here? Tea. Dorazal tea, should work. Cornflakes, anybody? Of course, Kellogg's cornflakes. John and Will Kellogg, ladies and gentlemen. More about that later. Dental mouthwash, the best mouth rinse in the world. I happen to know the inventor personally. You are the head pharmacist here. As an inventor, I'm always curious about what people think of inventors. Mm -hmm. If I told you that this was invented by mistake, yeah. will this change the way you think about me? No, because it's some of the inventions are by serendipity. So it's just, you know. Okay. Yeah. Right. And so, you're, you're uh, a PhD yeah. in chemistry, so don't uh, go away. <laughs> okay. So uh, what other products here do you have that were invented by serendipity? Where's your penicillin? And penicillin was discovered about three, three kilometers from here. So this is a remarkable moment for me because right up here on the second floor where I just visited was Sir Alexander Fleming's lab where he discovered penicillin. It became a commercial product just in time to save my life in 1952. How lucky I am. Other than penicillin, we have other products here that were invented by accident. Uh, we have uh, that thing called Viagra. What do you call it in, in England? Yeah, Emma's Viagra. nodding over here. Yeah. Nobody's going to admit using it, of course. Yes, um, I've yes. never heard of it. But <laughs> Viagra was, all, was also invented. That's right, yeah. Because it was for, the, for, for blood for pressure. Blood pressure. So I'm here with Sharon and Tim. Now, now's the time to tell the camera that you guys are representing a product in the UK which I happen to have invented. So let's have a look at it. So, okay, so this is a mouthwash that I invented by accident. This mouthwash uh, has a special mode of activation whereby the bacteria and the debris become stuck between the water and the oil droplets. And when you spit it out, you can see it in the sink. Shall I tell you how that happened? Yeah. Maybe I should tell them how that happened. We were in the laboratory, a pharmaceutical company was coming, and I wanted to impress them by adding some color to the mouthwash, because in the laboratory it was colorless. So I looked and I had one food color on the shelf, FD&C blue number one, I remember. I did not know that that color is also a biological state. And I gargled and spit out, and the color disappeared from the water. So I had a look in the microscope and I found that the color had become attached to the bacteria and debris which had become attached to the oil droplets. And then I said, oh, wow, you can actually see this working. And it, this turned into the biggest, the uh, unique selling point, USP, of this product. But it was by accident. Yeah. Now, it's a mouthwash with two phases that you have to shake before use. What do you think happened when I invented it 30 years ago? What did people say to me? Are you crazy? Okay, that's a kind. Uh, that's a kind way of saying it. What else did they say? Well, they probably told you it's not necessary. That mouthwash is done differently, and if it's not broken, don't try and fix it. Exactly. Or uh, who would want to shake sure. a two-phase mouthwash? So the word I was looking for was ridiculous. <laughs> right? An inventor has to be prepared mm -hmm. to appear ridiculous. Right? What did they say when the Wright brothers tried to fly an airplane? Hmm? You're ridiculous. Probably even their mother. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do 
to prepare for our Creativity 101 is to bark. Okay? <laughs> now, when you ask a child, a four-year-old, to bark, do they bark? Sure. Okay. Uh, are young children creative? Yes. Okay, so let's practice barking. Uh, who wants to go first? I'll go first. Uh, Please. Or, woo -hoo! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ladies first. <laughs> okay, you can do a bit better, Sharon. <laughs> you represent the whole big company. You own a big pharmaceutical yeah. company. Oh, I just haven't bought. I'll you. do it together with uh, you. Okay. One, two, three. Woof, woof. Very good, Tim. Uh, well, that was very good. So this was very this creative. was <laughs> this was the first lesson. Uh, there's many other lessons we don't have time to. The second would be, um, tell me something about a fish that's wrong. Fish is. What do you mean? So, a, a sentence about a fish. Oh, a fish is slippery. And okay, but now I want to, you you tell me something that isn't true because fish actually are slippery. Oh, sorry, I completely. No, it's okay. okay. It's so, in 101. We're allowed to make okay. mistakes. The okay. whole video is about making mistakes. That's okay. how I invented okay. the mouthwash. Okay. So. so Say something about a fish that is entirely incorrect. So fish can hold intelligent conversations with human beings. Okay, that's wonderful. Hi, so I'm here with Emma, Hi. who just walked into the pharmacy. So I asked Emma <laughs> on Anglais, I asked her to describe creative people. And what did you say about creative people? So I, in my opinion, creative people are not afraid to take risk, generous and impulsive. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so would you say that they are curious people? Oh, definitely, yeah. Mm. Do they observe details? They are observing details and they're open-minded as well. Open they need to. Mm -hmm. So if I asked you, what kind of people like that are open-minded, aren't afraid to take risks, to make mistakes, uh, are curious, observe everything, what kind of people are we talking about? Everyone. Yeah, but when? At what, when? At what age? What age? Oh yeah, kids. Yes! Definitely kids, les enfants. Yeah. Les enfants, beaucoup plus que les adultes. Oui, mais pourquoi? Why, why, why are kids more creative than adults? Or maybe they aren't. They are. It's just because their brain are not fastened yet into some habits and some things. So that why do we are. fasten them? Why don't we let them just be them forever? I don't know. That's a good question. We spent the morning, we walked into a supermarket and we discovered yep. that a supermarket is like a museum. Okay. But you can eat the, all the exhibits. So it's the history of the world through food. It sure is. But it's, it's a place, you know, you're the head of TESS. Yep. And I'm thinking because people are trashing schools all the time, that maybe we should have schools in supermarkets. I certainly think there's lots of learning to be had in supermarkets. Because everywhere you look, there's a story. There's a thousand stories for every product. This is, this is sugar-free gum. Yep. Every sugar-free, every artificial sweetener was invented by accident. You can't invent an artificial sweetener by planning, because we don't know what makes things sweet. So it's okay. all about people making mistakes, tasting their finger while they were cooking something. Okay. Wow. I have the same approach to cocktail making. I'm sure you do. Tea bags. Tea bags were invented completely by mistake in the early 20th century by somebody who would send tea bag samples to his customers in silk pouches. Okay. And he found that they were using them. He sent them as samples, right? Yeah. And he found that they were dipping them in the hot water and they asked him for more. And that's how tea bags were invented. Cool. The Kellogg brothers invented cornflakes by accident. Human beings invented fire by accident hundreds of thousands of years ago, but then yeah. they, they figured out how to do it themselves. So if progress and invention and discovery comes from making mistakes, you know, the guy who invented America and so on, yeah. then why do we frown on mistakes? Why, why do kids spend their whole lives getting the right answers and then they come out into the world and they see that it's all about getting the right questions. Yeah. Um, I mean, the answer to that, I think, is that we do have a system 
that's principally designed for compliance and for filtering. So it's a big filter for elite research-based universities to filter talent. And for everybody else, it's to train them to turn up on time, <laughs> to sit up straight and behave. And not to make any mistakes. And do as they're told, not make any mistakes. Okay. And so that, that worked really yeah. well for a factory-based industrial economy. So I'm a fan of kindergarten for life. Yeah. Keep which going. I'm doing now. Actually, I never really left kindergarten. I can believe you. <laughs> so, to end this, I'm going to ask you to say a true sentence about fish. Fish breathe through their gills and live in the sea. Okay. Now I want you to say, make a complete mistake. Say something completely imaginary, false, and... Fish cheese is really tasty. <laughs> the one and only Lord Jim Knight, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>